Bukhari. Chapter 1, Section 4, Osmosis Osmosis is the flow of water across a semi-permeable membrane because of the differences in solute concentration. Concentration differences of impermeable solutes establish osmotic pressure differences, and this osmotic pressure difference causes water to flow by osmosis. Osmosis of water is not diffusion of water. Osmosis occurs because of a pressure difference while diffusion occurs because of a concentration or activity difference of water. The osmolarity of a solution is its concentration of osmotically active particles. To calculate osmolarity, it is necessary to know the concentration of solute and whether the solute dissociates in solution. For example, glucose does not dissociate in solution. Sodium chloride dissociates into two particles, Calcium chloride dissociates into three particles. The symbol G gives a number of particles in solution and also takes into account whether there is complete or only partial dissociation. Thus, if sodium chloride is completely dissociated into two particles, G equals 2.0. If sodium chloride dissociates only partially, then G falls between 1.0 and 2.0. Osmolarity is calculated as follows. Osmolarity equals G times the concentration, which is typically expressed in millimoles per liter. If two solutions have the same calculated osmolarity, they are called isoosmotic. If two solutions have different calculated osmolarities, if the solution with the higher osmolarity is called hyperosmotic, the solution with the lower osmolarity is called hypoosmotic. Sample problem. Solution A is 2 millimole per liter urea, and solution B is 1 millimole per liter NaCl. Assume that G for NaCl is 1.85. Are the two solutions isoosmotic? Solution. Calculate the osmolarities of both solutions to compare them. Solution A contains urea, which does not dissociate in solution. Solution B contains NaCl which dissociates partially in solution but not completely, i.e. G is less than 2.0. Thus, the osmolarity in solution A is 1 osm per liter times 2 millimoles per liter, or 2 milliosms per liter. The osmolarity in B is 1.85 osms per mole times 1 millimole per liter, or 1.85 milliosms per liter. The two solutions do not have the same calculated osmolarity, therefore they are, not, they are not isoosmotic. Solution A has a higher osmolarity than solution B, and is hyperosmotic, solution B is hypoosmotic. Osmotic pressure. Osmosis is the flow of water across a semi-permeable membrane due to a difference in solute concentration. The difference in solute concentration creates an osmotic pressure difference across the membrane, and that pressure difference is a driving force for osmotic water flow. Figure 1-9, also shown on page 13, illustrates the concept of osmosis. Two aqueous solutions open to the atmosphere are shown in figure 1-9a. The membrane separating the solutions is permeable to water but is impermeable to the solute. Initially, solute is present only in solution 1. Solute in solution 1 produces an osmotic pressure difference and causes, by the interaction of solute with pores in the membrane, a reduction in the hydrostatic pressure of solution 1. The resulting hydrostatic pressure difference across the membrane then causes water to flow from solution 2 to, into solution 1. With time, water flow causes the volume of solution 1 to increase and the volume of solution 2 to decrease. Figure 1-9b, also from page 13, shows a similar pair of solutions. However, the preparation has been modified so that the water flow in solution 1 is prevented by applying pressure to a piston. The pressure required to stop the flow of water is the osmotic pressure of solution 1.
Osmotic pressure. The osmotic pressure, pi, of solution 1 depends on two factors, the concentration of osmotically active particles and whether the solute remains in solution 1, i.e., whether the solute can cross the membrane or not. The osmotic pressure is calculated by the Van t Hoff equation as follows, which converts the concentration of particles to a pressure, taking into account whether the solute is retained in the original solution. Pi, the osmotic pressure, equals G, or the number of particles per mole in solution, times C, the concentration, times sigma, the reflection coefficient, which varies between 0 and 1, times R, the gas constant, and times T, the absolute temperature. The reflection coefficient sigma is a dimensionless number ranging between 0 and 1 that describes the ease with which a solute crosses a membrane. Reflection coefficients can be described for the following conditions, figure 1-10. Here's figure 1-10a, also found on page 14 of your book. Here, sigma of the reflection coefficient equals 1. If the membrane is impermeable to the solute, sigma equals 1, and the solute will be retained in the original solution and exert its full osmotic effect. In this case, the effective osmotic pressure will be maximal and cause maximal water flow. For example, serum albumin and intracellular proteins are solutes where sigma, or the reflection coefficient, equals 1 equals 0, shown in figure 1-10c, also from page 14. If the membrane is fully permeable to the solute, sigma equals 0, and the solute will diffuse across the membrane down its concentration gradient until the solute concentration of the two solutions are equal. In other words, the solute behaves as if it were water. In this case, there will be no effective osmotic pressure difference across the membrane and, therefore, no driving force for osmotic water flow. Refer again to the Van Hoff equation and notice that when sigma equals zero, the calculated effective osmotic pressure becomes zero. Urea is an example of a solute where sigma equals zero, or at least nearly zero. The case when sigma is a value between zero and one is shown in figure 1-10b, also shown on page 14 of your book. Most solutes are, e are neither impermeant, meaning sigma equals 1, or freely permeant, meaning sigma equals 0, across membranes, but the reflection coefficient falls somewhere between 0 and 1. In such cases, the effective osmotic pressure lies between its maximal possible value when the solute is completely impermeable and zero when the solute is freely permeable. Refer once again to the Van Hoff equation and notice that when sigma is between zero and one, the calculated effective osmotic pressure will be less than its maximal possible value, but greater than zero. When two solutions are separated by a semi-permeable membrane that have the same effective osmotic pressure, they are isotonic. That is, no water will flow between them because there is no effective osmotic pressure difference across the membrane. When two solutions have different effective osmotic pressures, the solution with the lower effective osmotic pressure is hypotonic, and the solution with the higher effective osmotic pressure is hypertonic. Water will flow from the hypotonic solution to the hypertonic solution. Sample problem. A solution of 1 mole per liter sodium chloride is separated from a solution of 2 mole per liter urea by a semi-permeable membrane. Assume that sodium chloride is completely dissociated and that sigma for sodium chloride is 0.3 and sigma for urea is 0.05. Are the two solutions isoosmotic and or isotonic? Is there net water flow and, in, and what is its direction? Solution Step 1 to determine whether the solutions are isoosmotic, simply calculate the osmolarity of each solution, G times C, and compare the two values. It was stated that sodium completely dissociates, i.e., it separates into two particles, thus for sodium chloride, G equals 2. Urea does not dissociate in solution, thus for urea, G equals 1. So for sodium chloride, 
the osmolarity is G times C, or 2 times 1 mole per liter, or 2 osms per liter. Each solution has an osmolarity of 2 osms per liter. They are indeed isoosmotic. The osmolarity for urea was simply G times C, or 1 times 2 moles per liter, or 2 osms per liter. Step 2. To determine whether the solutions are isotonic, the effective osmotic pressure of each solution must be determined. Assume that at 37 degrees Celsius, or 310 Kelvin, RT is 25.45 liter atmospheres per mole. So for sodium chloride, pi equals G times C times sigma times R times T. G and C we have from the first part of this, and that's 2 times 1 moles per liter. Sigma was given in the problem at 0 0.3, and RT is a constant. These all equal 0 0.6 times RT, and multiplying in RT equals 15.3 atmospheres. When a similar calculation is done for urea, we find that pi is 2.5 atmospheres. So although the two solutions have the same calculated osmolarities and are isoosmotic, they have different effective osmotic pressures, and they are not isotonic. This difference occurs because the reflection coefficient for sodium chloride is much higher than the reflection coefficient for urea, and thus sodium chloride creates a greater effective osmotic pressure. Thus water will flow from the urea solution to the sodium chloride solution, from the hypotonic solution to the hypertonic solution. Osmosis and diffusion of water. Osmosis of water occurs more quickly than diffusion of water because it operates by a different mechanism. Osmosis of water across a membrane is caused by an osmotic pressure difference, i.e. the driving force is a pressure difference. Water flow due to a pressure difference is based on Poiseuille's law, which states that flow is proportional to the radius of the tube raised to the fourth power. In the case of osmosis, the tubes are the pores in the cell membrane through which the water flows. In contrast, diffusion of water across a membrane is caused by a concentration difference of water, i.e. the driving force is a concentration difference. As with all types of diffusion, water flow by diffusion is proportional to the surface area, and the area equals pi r squared. Therefore, diffusion of water is proportional to the radius of the pores raised only to the second power, r squared. This analysis allows one to understand why osmosis is faster than diffusion of water. The relationship between osmotic water flow and pore radius, r to the fourth power, is much more powerful than the relationship between diffusional water flow and pore radius, r to the second power.